Have you made a vow to a man, to a woman, and above all, to God? And what have you done to that vow? What have you done to that promise? Because that vow is still alive. When you didn't know what love was, you told someone, you shall live together until you die. Uh, if I won't marry you, I won't marry anyone. Now you are surprised that you are single. It's a vow you made. It's a vow you made. A vow, when fulfilled, has got great blessings. A vow, when fulfilled. Some of us, when we came here, we had no child. And because of desperation, he said, Lord, I'll make sure the child grows in the house of God. But the child only came here when he was dedicated. Since then, the child has never been back to the assembly of God. You have taken your child to all places. The child never stayed in the house where the child was dedicated. And you think the child holds, the vow holds. You broke the vow over the child. It's open now. You didn't take care of the vow you made and to see it that you protected the vow. Jesus Christ was not a Nazarite. He was a Nazarene. He grew up an environment where people were people of the vow. Your child, your children, how is the environment as you hear the scripture? Ask your neighbor. Your environment in your home, is your child growing in the ways of God? You are here tonight, this morning, in your excitement, in your desperation, you are giving a vow. When you heal me, Lord, this. When you break through my company, Lord, this. When you make me marry, Lord, this. Who? Oh. Ecclesiastes 5, verse 1. These are the things you just talk. And how God is holding you accountable. You are confused now. You say, me, my life is in a mess. What and what? You are the cause of your life. You, you think you are clever. You are not clever. Vows are ripping you apart. You look as if you have. You got nothing. Look at the people that are crying because of the vow they are holding on to. And you even cross the line, you even promise God. And God calls you a fool. And if you don't wake up, you die like that. You cannot offer prayer now or blessing or whatever. Look at the vow. When a woman who is married makes a promise, or a pledge. When a husband hears about it, even if they made it somewhere in another country, he hears about it, the man has got a right to cancel it. The husband has got a right not to make that promise come to bear fruit. Because the husband heard it and he didn't like it, he canceled it. And should be set free from God, from that vow. Some of you, when you are disappointed, I'll never, never, never my, be near man. Now, no one comes to you except somebody who's below the age of 10 years. <laughs> your son is coming to you, your last born son is the one who comes to you to talk to you. What vow? did you make? Faith, we say, and we forget. It's better just wait. Now you, it was a vow. It was a promise from your own mouth. Now you are surprised with how your life is going round. This is a personal thing. 
There's nothing to say, me, I'm all right. Whatever. Some of you, from young, you have never kept any promise you have said. And that, those things are being fulfilled in your life reversal. Look at your age. Look before you. What achievements? Apart from vow again. You are vowing to another woman. I'll keep you. I'll keep you. I'll keep you. Instead of telling the woman truth, you keep me. But you say, I'll keep you. This is a wrong vow. You can't keep her. She will keep you. That's the beginning of cancelling this vow now. Because every time you say, I love you, what and what, but what you mean is, I want to come into your house, you take care of me and everything like that. That's wrong. The woman is agreeing to you because based on a lie of a vow. This will not last. And think of your children. Because in this union, there are children. Your children will be worse than you when it comes to vows.